Okay, so chapter 14, acid and bases. Acid uh, properties and examples. Acid have the following properties. Acid have a sour taste. Acid dissolve many metals. Acid turn blue litmus paper to red. And here is a picture of the litmus paper and uh, this part is in the acid solution. So it become red. Example of uh, acid is uh, hydrochloric acid. Uh, so this is the molecule of uh, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and this is the model for the HCl. So this green is the Cl atom, the white is the hydrogen atom. Hydrochloric acid is found in most uh, chemistry laboratories. It is a strong acid. Uh, it is used in industry to, to clean metals, prepare and process food and refine metal ores. Hydrochloric acid is the main component of a stomach acid. Hydrochloric acid helps break down food and it kills harmful bacteria that might enter the body through food. Another example of acid is the sulfuric acid and also the nitric acid. So there are formula and the structures is shown in these two pictures. The left is for the sulfuric acid, the right is for the nitric acid. Sulfuric acid is the most widely produced chemical in the United States. Annual US production of sulfuric acid exceeds 36 million tons. Sulfuric acid and nitric acid commonly used in the laboratory. Sulfuric acid and nitric acid are used in manufacture of fertilizers, explosives, dyes, and glue. Both sulfuric acid and nitric acid are strong acids. Sulfuric acid uh, is contained in most automobile batteries, um, and batteries. Another example of uh, acid is acetic acid. Uh, here's the picture and formula for the acetic acid. Acetic acid forms in, uh, in uh, improperly stored wines. The word uh, vinegar originated from French uh, when uh, re, which means uh, sour wine. Acetic acid is an example of uh, carboxylic acid. It's organic acid. Uh, acid contains the COOH group of atoms known as the carboxylic acid group. So here is the carboxylic acid group. COOH, this bond is bonding to something else. So the carbon double bond to the O and the single bond to the oxygen, then oxygen single bond to this H. This H will be the acetic H. Acetic acid is a weak acid. Uh, there are a few more carboxylic acid, uh, wine, the citric acid, and the other one, the malic acid. There are formula and model is given in those pictures. You can see in this uh, citric acid, there will be three carboxylic groups. So this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. In malic acid, there will be two of those uh, carboxylic acid groups. One here on the right, one here on the left. This OH is the alcohol group, not the acid group. We often find uh, carboxylic acid in substances uh, derived from living organisms. Uh, other uh, carboxylic acid, including citric acid here, the main acid in lemon and the limes, and malic acid, an acid found in apples, grapes, and wine. Both citric acid and malic acid are weak acid.
basis, these uh, properties and examples. Uh, base have the following properties. Uh, base have a bait taste. Uh, base feel a slippery feel. Base turn red litmus paper to blue. See this red litmus paper. This part is in the basic solution and it become blue. Base feel slippery. All of those consumer product contain bases. Here are some of the common consumer product. Yeah, one example is yeah, those uh, Drano to clean the drains in the sink or bathtub. Faces feel slippery because they react with oil on your skin to form a soup like substances. Soup itself is basic and it, uh, it's a slippery feel is a characteristic of basis. Some household cleaning solutions such as ammonia are also basic and have the typically slippery feel of a base. Base tastes bitter. Uh, bases are less common in food than acid because of their bitter taste. Our uh, aversion to the taste of a base is probably an adoption to protect us against uh, alkaloid, which are organic bases found in plants. Alkaloids are often poisonous. The active component of uh, hemolac, for example, is the alkaloid uh, coin, and their basic taste warns us against eating them. And here is a molecular formula and structure of uh, coin. Uh, the death of uh, sucrase uh, was by coin poisoning, as shown in this uh, paint. Some food contains small amount of base. Caffeine is uh, uh, acidic overall, but the base is present in coffee, such as uh, caffeine, uh, in part of beta flavor. And here is the structure and molecular formula for caffeine. Base examples, uh, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and sodium bicarbonate. Sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide are found in most um, chemistry laboratories. Uh, they are used in processing petroleum and cotton and in soap and plastic uh, manufacturing. Sodium hydroxide is the active ingredient in products such as Drano that work to unclog drains. Sodium bicarbonate can be found in most home, homes as baking soda and is an in, active ingredient in many anti acids when taking as antiacid, sodium bicarbonate neutralizes uh, stomach acid, relieving heartburns and uh, sour stomach. The definition of some of those acid base, uh, first, the uh, erroneous definition of acid. Uh, according to erroneous uh, acid, uh, uh, some of those substances produce H plus ion in aqueous solution. Here is a picture for HCl. So if you uh, put HCl in water, it um, produces H plus ion, Cl negative ion. So H plus ion will give the solution the acidic uh, characteristic. Okay, so again, HCl is a covalent compound and does not contain ions. Uh, in water, HCl ionizes to form H plus ion and Cl one negative ions. So the process is, uh, or the equation for this process is written as HCl AQ, which means you put HCl in water. Uh, once you put that in water, the water will separate the H plus uh, from the CL negative. 
or separate the H atom from the Cl atom. And as a result, we have two ions. The H plus ion are highly reactive. In equal solution, they bond to water molecule according to the following reaction. So uh, H plus plus H2O, which is a water molecule, produce H3O, H3H, and one O plus. So the H3O plus is uh, named as hydronium ion. In water, H plus ion always associated uh, with uh, H2O molecules. Chemists often use H plus AQ and H3O plus AQ interchangeably to refer to a uh, hydronium ion. In the molecular formula of an acid, we often write the ionizable hydrogen first, often but not always. So therefore, we write the formula for formic acid as uh, HCHO2. So this first uh, highlighted red H atom is so-called ionizable, which means if you put this molecule in water, so most likely this H can get apart from this unit become H plus. And uh, then there's another H, that H is non-ionizable H. We represent the structure of a formic acid with its structure formula as uh, this. And here you will see more clearly the COOH group we talked about in the previous slide or the carboxylic acid group, the so COOH. So therefore, this H is the ionizable hydrogen. The structure formula indicates how the atoms are bonded together. The molecular formula indicates the number of each type of atom. So it's very useful to know what are the structure formula for some of those given compounds. Uh, Erroneous definition of bases, and here is the picture. We have NaOH. We know NaOH is strong base because if you put NaOH in water, what do we get is Na plus ion, OH one negative ion, OH one negative ion, make the solution have the characteristic of a basic. The so base, uh, according to Erroneous, uh, a base produces uh, OH uh, negative ion in aqueous solution. So OH negative ion is the hydroxide. NaOH is an erroneous base because it produces uh, OH negative ion in solution. Uh, NaOH is an ionic compound and contains Na plus ion and hydroxide ions. Uh, when NaOH is added to water, it dissociates into its uh, component uh, ions. Uh, some molecular compound contain an OH group such as uh, methanol CH3OH. Do not dissociate in solution and therefore do not act as a, a basis. Uh, under the erroneous definition, acid, uh, acids and bases uh, naturally combine to form water, neutralizing each other in the process. So you can write uh, a net ionic equation as H plus A plus plus uh, OH negative A plus produce uh, H2O liquid. Another definition of acid base is the browsted lowry definition. So according to browsted lowry acid uh, is uh, a substance that uh, uh, donate proton or acid is a proton donor. Base, a base is a proton acceptor. So what do they mean by proton? Proton means H plus. The erroneous definition does not apply to non aqueous solvent. The browser lowry definition of acid base apply to a wider range of acid base phenomena. This definition 
focuses on the transfer of a proton H plus ion in an acid-based reaction. Since an H plus ion is a proton, a hydrogen atom with its electron taken away, so that's a, a proton. Uh, this definition focuses on the idea of a proton donor and uh, proton acceptance. According to this defini definition, HCl is a bronzed lowry acid because in solution it donates a proton to water. The following equation represents that process. We have HCl equals plus H2O liquid produces H3O plus and Cl negative equals. So in this process, going from left to right, you can see this HCl donating the H plus or loss the H plus. So therefore, we say HCl is the acid. This definition more clearly accounts for what happens to the H plus ion from an acid. It, it, it associates with a water molecule to form H3O plus a hydronium ion. The browser, the Lowry definition works well with bases uh, such as uh, uh, NH3 that do not inherently contain the hydroxide ion, but still produce hydroxide ion in solution. Uh, so we can see this equation, ammonia NH3 equals plus H2 liquid produce uh, NH4 plus and uh, hydroxide. So in this process, this NH3 take one H plus away from water, it turn into NH4 plus, then make water turn into hydroxide. Therefore, we see in this reaction, this uh, ammonia, this uh, NH3 is a browser lowry base because it accepts a proton from water. Uh, so in the reaction between HCl and H2O, HCl is the proton donor and H2O or the water is the uh, proton acceptor, so water is the base. Uh, in the reaction between NH3 and water, H2O is the proton donor uh, acid and NH3 is the proton acceptor is the base. So in these two reactions, we have water in one reaction that behave as a base, in other reaction, what behave as acid. And also the last equation show you, if you have a base and, and then the base uh, will produce the conjugate acid. So this is base NH3. So if the base accepts the H plus, uh, then the product become a, uh, the conjugate acid, uh, vice versa. If the something is acid and it's donating the H plus, then it itself turn into the conjugate base. So we see those are the conjugate pairs, the conjugate pairs. So base and the conjugate acid, acid conjugate base. Uh, so here in the one practice, we want to classify matter. In each reaction, identify the browser lowry acid, browser lowry base, and the conjugate acid, conjugate base. The first one is the reaction between H2SO4 and water, turn into H3 plus and HSO4 one negative. So in the reaction, we can see this H2SO4 donate a proton to H2O in this reaction. H is the acid because it's a proton donor. After H2SO4 donates the proton, it becomes HSO4 one negative. That will be the conjugate base. Since H2O accepts the proton, it is the base, the proton acceptor. After H2 accepts the proton, it becomes H3O plus the conjugate acid. So here we summarize. H2SO4 is the acid. It produces conjugate uh, base. And what is the base? It produces conjugate acid. The second part of the question is um, uh, we have uh, HCO3 negative H2O uh, produce H2CO3 and OH negative. 
So on the left side, we have uh, H2O. Uh, since H2O donates a proton to HCO3 one negative in this direction, going from left to right, it is the acid, the proton donor, after H2O donating the proton, it becomes uh, hydroxide, the conjugate base. And since HCO3 negative accepts the proton, it is the base, the proton acceptor. After HCO3 by negative accept the proton, it becomes H2CO3, the conjugate acid. So we summarize, see, HCO3 negative is the base going from left to right. Then it produces the conjugate acid, H2CO3. So water on the left act as acid because it donates the H plus. Then it turns into the conjugate base hydroxide. And uh, the reaction of acid base uh, pretty much is the neutralization reaction. When an acid and a base are mixed, uh, the H plus from acid combines with the hydroxide from base to form H2O. Here's one example. We have a HCl, SA is the acid, KOH is the base. So these two acid base reaction produce H2O and then KCl. We call those ionic compound the salt. Acid base reaction. Uh, generally forms water and uh, salt, an uh, ionic compound is called the salt. That usually remain dissolved in the solution. The salt contains the cation, so the cation from the base, and the anion from the acid. So in this salt, K is cation come from the base. Cl is anion come from the acid. The net ion equation for many Neutralization reaction is H plus AQ plus OH negative AQ produce H2O liquid. Okay, so writing equation for neutralization reaction, write a molecular equation for the reaction between A plus HCl and A plus uh, CaOH2 calcium hydroxide. So the solution is you first identify the S in the base and write the skeletal reaction showing the production of water and the salt. The formula for the ionic compound in the equation must be charge neutral, as we see in section 5.5. So we write HCl because that is the given uh, one reactant. So that's the acid. Ca and parenthesis OH and parenthesis 2 aqueous is our base. So we see they produce H2O. Then we take the cation from the base and anion from the acid produces the salt. To neutralize the charge because C is the two plus Cl in the one negative. So we need two Cl to neutralize the charge. This is the, the skeletal uh, chemical reaction equation. So you want to balance the equation by using the coefficient. Uh, notice that uh, Ca uh, OH2 contain two more of OH for every one more of Ca OH2. So therefore, it requires two more of H plus to neutralize. So therefore, we will put a two uh, for the HCl. Uh, if you put a two for HCl, that means we can see two H2O liquid. So acid base titration is a way to quantify the amount of acid or base in a solution, which is pretty much using the acid base reaction. Then you control how much you mix, and uh, so that will be the titration. A uh, solution stoichiometry can be applied to a common laboratory procedure called titration. In titration, a substance in a solution of known concentration is reacted with another substance in the solution of unknown concentration. The unknown concentration is calculated from the titration data. Its own volume used and the volume used and the concentration of the other substances for example, an acid base titration, the concentration of uh, the base can be calculated from its own volume used and the volume used and the concentration of the acid, vice versa. So here we see the picture for the titration. Usually you will see these two solutions. One solution in, in one container, the other solution in the other container. 
And here the container we use is a flask. You can also use a beaker. Typically, you will use this long uh, skinny called the burette for the other reagent. So you control how much you add them together until they are both used up. So that's called the equivalent point. Okay, so again, here we're starting with acid in the flask. We don't have any base. So we're just adding the base uh, gradually, gradually. So adding base will use acid, adding base use acid. You just control until you adding enough base, use up all the acid, acid in the flask, then you have the equivalent point. So from those data, you can calculate the concentrations. So in titrating this example, we slowly add a solution of NaOH with known concentration to the solution of HCl with unknown concentration in the flask. So before you start in the adding, you control or you measure how much acid you have, even though you don't know the concentration, but you know how much volume of the acid in the flask. So then you know the concentration of the base, and then if you Adding slowly, you will see when it's uh, all used up uh, uh, by the acid, and uh, you, you stop adding, you will see how much NaOH you use. So, from the volume of NaOH you use and the concentration of NaOH itself, you can calculate the concentration of the acid because you know the volume of that. At, again, at the equivalent point, uh, neither reactant is present in excess and both are used up or both are limited. The number of moles of the reactant are related by the reaction stoichiometry. Uh, so as the hydroxide is added, it reacts with and neutralizes the H plus forming water. At the equivalent point, the point in the titration when the number of moles of OH added equal to the number of moles of H plus originally in the solution, the titration is complete. The equivalent point is usually signaled by an indicator, which is a dye whose color depends on the acidity of the solution or use pH meter. So in most laboratory titration, the concentration of one of the reacting solution is unknown the concentration of the other one is precisely known. By carefully measure the volume of each solution required to reach the equivalent point, the concentration of the unknown solution can be determined. And um, in this titration, NaOH is added to HCl again shown here. When the NaOH and HCl reach equivalent pro uh, proportions, one of uh, OH, uh, one negative for every one of each plus. The indicator here is uh, phenosylin, which is colorless in acid and um, become pink when the pH is higher than um, eight. So it when, when this signal happens, that means uh, we don't have any acid base in the plus. See, both are used. Uh, so signal the equivalent point of a titration when we have see the, the red. Phenosylin is a common indicator that is colorless in acidic solution and the pink in basic solution. Now we will see some of those examples of the titration. So here the titration of 10.00 ml, which is the milliliter of uh, HCl solution of unknown concentration. So we know our acid, we don't know the concentration but we see how much we put in in the flask, we know the volume. And we said to use up all those acid, we need 12.54 uh, milliliter of uh, a strong base, which is uh, NaOH. Then we know the concentration of the NaOH use is 0 0.100 molar to reach the equivalent point. So from those data, we can calculate the concentration of the unknown HCl solution. So to do that, we'll first write, write the balance, the chemical equation for the reaction between acid and base. Uh, so we see acid is HCl, base is NaOH, product is H2O and NaCl. Then we balance the equation, the equation is the balance. So then uh, another step will be to calculate more of uh, 
the HCL, which means calculate the more of HCL from the data of titration. So what we know is uh, we know the milliliter of NaOH use, and then we know the concentration of uh, NaOH. So we're using this uh, uh, three step to calculate more of HCL. Uh, so we know the 12.54 ml of NaOH. Uh, we needed to use this uh, conversion to convert in from the ml to the L. So after we get the liter, then we'll use this concentration. So remember this concentration can always be written as a fraction whenever you see the capital M. So that becomes 0 0.100 mol over 1 L. So we multiply this, uh, uh, those uh, quantities, we'll see the cancellation of the L and the cancellation of the ML will get more MOL and AOH. But we want to get the more of HCL. We will use the more ratio, which is the coefficient ratio in the balance equation. From the equation, we can see there's no number uh, in front of uh, HCL, so that means one. And the no number for AOH, that means also one. So therefore, we have one MOL HCL over YMOL and AOH. So we can use this more ratio to convert in the more of NAOH to the more of HCL. So once we get more of uh, HCL, we calculate in molarity by using uh, the definition of molarity. Molarity, the capital M, capital M equal to MOL over L. Okay, now we will apply our uh, uh, map. Uh, so the first step is calculate uh, more of HCL. You see in this process, we uh, cancel out all the units. We only have one unit left over, which is the MOL HCL. So that is what we want. And we calculating by dividing and multiply those numbers. We get 1.25 times 10 to the negative three MOL HCL. Okay, so now we get one quantity for the molarity. The second step is uh, just calculate the molarity. So we know how much volume of the HCL use. Uh, in the question that given 10.00 ML, then you know 10.0 ML is a 0 0.01000 L. Okay, so this how we get this L, this volume. And this number it comes from step one. So therefore we get 0 0.125 uh, capital M, or, which is a molar or molarity. So now we'll solve the problem. And um, so we also know as the base can be strong, can be weak. Uh, for example, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and hydrochloric acid, they, they are both acids, they appear similar, but there is an important difference between these two acids. HCl is an example of a strong acid, so uh, that means uh, the strong acid completely ionized in solution. HF is a weak acid. Uh, the weak acid that does not completely ionize in solution. And uh, see this picture will tell the complete or incomplete. So the left one is HCl. When HCl dissolves in water, it completely ionized into H3O plus and Cl negative one, negative one ion. So therefore we don't see we don't see any um, those HCl remaining uh, after it dissolves. And uh, here is the formula, here is the picture. So we can see this is the HCl, the green one in the Cl, the white one in the H. So after we put this in water, we don't see the white and the green together anymore. They all separated. So ideally that's the truth. Uh, so therefore, we use uh, one arrow indicates the complete ionization. Just 
one arrow pointing from left to right. I compare the other weak acid, which is HF. When HF dissolves in water, only a fraction of the dissolved molecular ionized into H3 plus and F1 ion. The solution contains many intact HF molecules as shown in this picture. Left picture just uh, left, uh, left picture just show you the molecular formula. Uh, the right picture show you the model. So you starting with either one, let's see the right one. We have the H, the white one is H, the green H1 is F. So this is a molecular. You put that in water because this is a weak acid and then most of them intact, they do not break apart. So you still have the HF, HF. And this picture just show you out of four, only one of them separate become iron even though they're not the right proportion. That means always like one out of four for the HF do that, just as the uh, illustration here. All right, so therefore we use uh, two arrows, one arrow pointing to uh, right, the other arrow pointing to left, which means this process is not completely, it's only partial. So this table gives us some of the common uh, strong acid, HCl we saw before, then also HCl, HI, uh, not HF. And uh, then we have the nitrate, uh, perchlorate, and the sulfuric. Uh, in this class, six substances are considered a strong acid in aqueous solution. Uh, five of these six acids and table are monoprotic acid. Uh, acid contain only one ionizable proton. Mono, the prefix mono means one. So monoprotic, 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 and monoprotic. And there's only one diprotic. Di means two. So that means uh, to the most, the sulfuric acid can give two A's. So the diprotic acid means an acid contain two ionizable protons. An ionizable proton is one that become H plus ion in solution. And here are the, some of the common weak acids. We saw some of them before, for example, the HF we just saw on the last two slides. Uh, acetic acid, carboxylic acid, formic acid, and some of this uh, inorganic acid like uh, Sulfurous acid, carbonic acid, and phosphoric acid. There are many weak acids, some organic and some inorganic. Uh, most carboxylic acids are weak acids. Two of the weak acids uh, shown in table one are diprotic, and one is triprotic. You probably can see which one di. So these three are mono, these two are di, this one tri. Triprotein. So sulfuric acid and carbonic acid are weak in both of their ionizable proton. And the phosphoric acid is weak in all three of the ionizable protons. So phosphoric is the last one. It has three H can be ionized. Sulfuric acid, at least in the last slide, is the strong acid, is the diprotic acid that is the uh, strong in its first ionizable proton, but weak in its second ionizable proton. Uh, so here we want to determine the H3O plus concentration in, in the acidic solutions. Uh, so determine the H3O plus concentration in each solution use equal, less than, or larger than. So we know that depends on the strength of the acid. So if we have a mono uh, uh, protein strong acid, like this first one, uh, so therefore we can say equal. Um, so since HCl is a strong acid, it completely ionized, the concentration uh, of uh, H3O plus equal to the concentration of HCl uh, is mono strong. So that's why we say equal. Uh, for the 
Second one, this is a, a way of a right acetic acid. We know acetic acid is a weak acid, so it's partially ionized. The calculation of the exact concentration is not in this class, so we will not do the calculation. Uh, but we just say because it's a weak acid, it's not 100% give you the H plus, therefore we will see less than the H plus concentration or the H3O plus concentration, even less than the concentration of the given acid, which means the whole unit. So the whole unit, 3.0 molar, uh, therefore, this is the weak acid, we will see the H3 plus is less than 3.0 molar. And the last one is the strong acid in the mono uh, protein, so therefore it will be equal. Okay, so again, since uh, H3 is a strong acid, so if it's a, a strong mono protein, it completely ionizes the, the concentration of the H3 plus is same as the uh, acid, the acid concentration is given. So when you give the problem of this concentration, referring to this acid. But the, here the question is, what is the concentration of the H3 plus? So therefore, depending on the acid strong or weak, and if they are strong, they are monoprotic, so they are equal. Uh, otherwise, uh, depending on the question for the Second one, the acetic acid, which is the mono uh, weak acid, so therefore we see less. And for the other two, A and C, they are mono strong, mono protein strong acids, so they are the same, they are equal. A strong base is the one that completely dissociating in solution. And here, uh, sorry, so here are a few examples of the strong bases LiOH, NaOH, KOH. Uh, so for this three uh, metal hydroxide, uh, they give you one hydroxide. For each one unit, there is one OH. For this three on the right, uh, they will give you two OH. So for every one of this, it will give you two OH. Uh, so again, an NaOH solution contain uh, no intact NaOH at all. It has all dissociated into Na plus and OH1 negative. When Na which dissolves in water, it completely dissociated into Na plus and OH1 negative. Here, the formula has a picture. Either way, so you we don't have any O uh, any Na OH together, so they all separate. Uh, weak base is uh, analogous to a weak acid. Uh, unlike a strong base, they contain uh, OH uh, negative and dissociating water. The most common weak bases produce uh, hydroxide by accepting a proton from water, causing the water to form hydroxide ion. So they are, uh, if they are weak uh, base, we will use two arrows uh, from uh, left to right. Or from right to left. So here is a generic name just called B, which is standing for base, not for not for boron. It's just B for base. So that's your base, and react with water. So the the base accept the H plus from water become B H plus, and then water become O H negative. Uh, in this reaction, B is a generic a name for weak base, not boron again. Um, so the B can be an H3. Uh, so for example, when an H3 dissolves in water, it partially ionized to form uh, an H4 plus and the uh, OH negative. However, only a fraction of the molecular uh, ionized, uh, most molecule remain as an H3. And this table, uh, show you some of those uh, common uh, weak bases. We saw ammonia, and uh, the, most of them contain the nitrogen atom. Then the last one, the bicarbonate, uh, HCO3, one negative, that don't have the nitrogen. Uh, there are many weak bases. Organic amines are weak bases. So this is the organic amine, or, organic amine, and they are or some of those molecules have the nitrogen atom. 
then the here are the formula for the equation when they reacting with water and they behave as a phase and they all produce OH negative, OH negative, OH negative, OH negative, OH negative. And uh, depend on the uh, acid uh, strength, we know how to uh, figure out the concentration of, of H plus. And similarly, depend on the strength of the base, we can get some idea like use E pro less than to see the concentration of uh, hydroxide. So the first question is the 2.25 molar KOH. So what will be the concentration for hydroxide in this solution? We know the KOH is from a base. So for each one KOH, it will give you one OH negative. So therefore, so therefore we see the concentration of hydroxide is 2.25, which is same as the concentration for KOH. So here you want to see the difference between the concentration um, for KOH and the concentration. I mean, conservatively, you will see the difference, even though the number here are the same. So therefore, we see uh, OH negative concentration equals to 2.25, even though the 2.25 initially conservatively referring to the concentration of the KOH. So the second base is the weak base, and we know it will not give you uh, the same number as the concentration for this molecule. It will, will be less than, right? Because it's a weak, weak base. So therefore, even though we, in this class, we don't do the calculation, but we just say it's less than this 0 0.35, it's much, much less than. Then the last one is the strong base, and uh, but it's a kind of a, a strong base in some sense different than this strong base because in this strong base, there's only one OH for one formula unit. In this strong base, it will give you two OH and uh, uh, completely give you two OH. So there's a one and a two ratio in this base. So therefore the concentration for the hydroxide come from this two, you will, you will multiply the concentration of the hydroxide by two. Okay? Uh, so therefore you get 0 0.050, even though the concentration for the base formula, 0 0.025 from each formula, you get a two hydroxide, so two hydroxide. So therefore you multiply the concentration of the base formula by two to get the concentration of hydroxide. Uh, so we can conveniently to use uh, some new number to see the acidity and the basicity of a solution, which are pH and pOH. So pH just mathematically equal to negative ROG, the concentration of H plus. So ROG is uh, the log, the time based logarithm function. So just use your calculator. If you know the concentration of H plus, which should be the molarity, you take the negative ROG, you will get pH. If you know the concentration, the, the molarity concentration of hydroxide, you take a negative ROG of the concentration of hydroxide, so we will get pH. And these two are connected. And uh, so pH plus pH equal to 14. And also, you know, at uh, 25 degrees Celsius, if the pH less than seven for your solution, then you have acidic solution. If the pH equal to seven, that means you have a neutral solution. If pH larger than seven, then the solution is the basic. And therefore, the pH scale really uh, make the comparison much uh, neat and easier. Uh, typical, typically, the pH value is like 0 to 14. If you compare the number for the H plus molarity, you will see a huge range, so not a convenient. So here we want to calculate the pH of each solution, then indicating whether the solution is acidic or basic. So what you, are, what you have is the concentration of the H3O plus. We know we can use H3O plus and H plus in the same way. 
which means if this concentration is for H3 plus, then it's the same as for H plus. So in the equation, we write uh, pH equals negative log H plus. Therefore, we can use the number for the H3 plus. We just plug it in into the calculator. Uh, so again, this ROG is a time-based logarithm. And uh, we put this information in the calculator, we get uh, negative negative 3.74, so therefore we get positive 3.74, which means the pH is less than seven, so therefore it's acidic. For the second part of the question, we have the H3 plus, okay, we can use that as H plus, and uh, we put in the calculator, we get negative negative 8.14. So we get eight, positive 8.14 and which more than seven, so therefore it's basic. You can do the reverse uh, by just do some of the simple math work. If you know the pH, you can calculate the, the molarity of the molar concentration of uh, H plus or H3 O plus. So we'll use this um, 10 to the negative uh, X function in your calculator. So mathematically, or the equation, we know the pH is written as negative log uh, H3 O plus. We will plug those numbers in, so we know the pH, so 4.8. And then what you do, you will multiply or divide both sides by negative one, right? So negative, negative become positive on the right. Then this positive 4.80 become negative 4.80. Then you will use this function because this uh, x uh, time based exponential function and then time based logarithm function are the inverse function of each other. So you you take the or you use a time-based algorithm on the left, you will get a 10 to the negative 4.80. If you use time-based algorithm, uh, time-based exponential on the right, so you get a 10 to the power of ROG Z H3 plus, then what happen is this exponential function, logarithm function, the inverse each other, that means the cancel, that means kind of the don't do anything. So you do something like uh, you want to buy something, then you multiply by something. So that's the inverse each other. Okay. So that's kind of out. So therefore, we still have this side uh, 10 to negative 4.8. Then the 10 and ROG kind of out. That means they don't do anything. Uh, so you are left over with H3 plus. And uh, then use your calculator, just calculator what is the 10 to the negative 4.80 power. So the calculator can do that. So that will get to 1.6, 10 to the negative five. And uh, um, so another interesting solution in the buffer. In the buffer solution, they will resist uh, the pH change and the remedies the pH change. Uh, buffer contains significant amount of both uh, weak acid and it's conjugate base. Uh, the acid neutralized added on base. Uh, the conjugate base neutralized added on acid. And uh, for example, the human blood has a buffer. In uh, health in the video, the blood pH is between 7.36, 7 7.40. It's very narrow range for the pH. So therefore, uh, there's, a, there's a few like, a, um, we need a buffer in the in the in human bodies. Uh, there are a few buffers. Uh, so uh, one of them was the carbonic acid and and bicarbonate. There are also other like the hemoglobin and so on. So the blood pH, if the blood pH would drop below seven point zero or uh, about seven point eight, and then that will be fatal. In the, let's say in this one example of buffer, in the acetic acid, the sodium acid to the buffer cysteine, there is the acid, which is the acetic acid, and there's the base, which is the acetate ion. Uh, when base is added, uh, the acetic acid will react. Uh, so 
Again, we have a buffer. That means we have the acid base. If you add in some acid, add in some base, then what the buffer do is try to neutralize what's adding on to uh, minimize the pH change. So let's say we have this buffer, and we're adding a strong base. Um, if you're adding strong base to water, your pH will grow up very quick. But if you're adding a strong base to a buffer, your pH will grow up a little bit. But you're adding, if you continue adding, then you will destroy the buffer and it will grow up very quick also. So when acid is added, then the base in your buffer will neutralize adding on acid. So our buffer, the base is uh, the acetate. But you know, we cannot only get acetate, so therefore we need to see the counter ion. So acetate is negative ion, the counter ion is Na, Na is a plus. Even though Na is just spectator. So therefore, when you're adding a strong acid, so this can this like a weak base uh, turn the acid into a weak acid. So in that sense, the pH will not go, go down too much. And uh, the acid consume any added uh, base, the base consume any added acid in this way, the buffer resist the uh, pH change. So again, they not really um, totally take them away. They just change, uh, like for example, from a strong acid into a weak acid, changing the added down strong base into a weak base. So in that sense, you will not see too much uh, pH change. In this uh, carton, and uh, we can see we have a buffer. Our buffer will have these two components, okay? So this component is our acid component of the buffer. And then this component is our base component of the buffer. We need this spectate ion to make our sodium acetate because you cannot only have acetate. So just remember we have these two components, uh, uh, the weak base, the uh, weak acid, now we will see what will happen if you adding some of this strong acid or adding some of this strong base. In this picture, we see we adding some of this strong acid. Strong acid will give the H plus. If you don't do anything, then your pH will drop very quick. But uh, if you have a buffer, so the weak base in the buffer will take in the H plus. It turn into a weak acid. Turn into this. So even though it's turned into a weak acid, but the acid is weak, you are not 100% ionized into H plus. So therefore, you really uh, like neutralize most of the H plus you add on, and uh, vice versa. If you adding uh, some of those strong base, and uh, if you don't do anything else, then your pH will go up very quick. But if you buffer, so the weak acid in the buffer react with uh, the add on strong base. I turn the strong base into this weak base, then you see you still have base, but you turn a strong base into a weak base, that means the weak base will not give you that much of OH, uh, because OH is the basic. So therefore, it will uh, make the pH change to as small as uh, possible, depending on your weak acid and weak base, and depending on how much you have. Okay, so this, is uh, for this chapter, um, this is the end of this.